Thanks for joining us tonight for Crem 2 News at 5. I'm Cody Proctor. Mark and Whitney are off this Friday night. Let's begin this evening with a live look over Lake Coeur Lane. There, thousands will look to spend the hot Labor Day weekend. Also, we've got a lot of people down at Riverfront Park right there. Let's go back to Lake Coeur Lane. Beautiful sunshine at the moment. Let's just send it over to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagu. He has been tracking the return of 90 degree temperatures in the forecast. Uh, Cody, can I get a drum roll? Did we hit 90 degrees? Did we? No, 87. Oh. I already knew that. I just wanted to see you do the drum roll. <laughs> it is ample sunshine this evening. 87 degrees outside. You cross state lines into Coeur d'Alene, 85, 86 up in Sandpoint, near 90 out in central Washington. It is a beautiful evening across much of the inland northwest. Tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday all wind up a bit hotter, and with temperatures climbing into the 90s each day, we are back under heat advisories. 90s, not that hot a month ago, but this time of year it's about 10 degrees or so above normal. So it is a bit more of a big deal. It's incredibly difficult for us to get this kind of warm this time of year. In fact, Sunday's high of 95 degrees winds up being just three degrees shy, if we hit 95, three degrees shy of the record high of 98 degrees for the day. 93 Saturday, 95 Sunday, 90 on Monday with storms returning late. But the message I want to drive home this weekend is that even though we are in the 90s each afternoon, every single night we fall back into the 50s. So you will find some relief every day. Well, taking a look at other top headlines tonight, the man who opened fire at Freeman High School seven years ago, killing a student, is awaiting a new sentencing date after a hearing yesterday. Caleb Sharp was 15 years old at the time when he entered the high school with a gun, killing one student and injuring three others. More than two years ago, Sharp was sentenced to four years to life in prison. However, a Washington State Court of Appeals found Sharp's sentence was too long and he needs to be resentenced. At yesterday's hearing, both the defense and prosecution said they'll be asking the court for a statutory sentence of 25 years to life. A resentencing date has not been scheduled. An update on the Grant County shooting involving two minors on Monday. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says one of them, a 16-year-old, has died. That shooting took place in Desert Air, south of Vantage. Deputies say the two victims were shot before they drove to another location. The other person was not badly hurt. The Sheriff's Office believes it's gang-related. Take a look at this. An early morning house fire in Spokane Valley ended with the roof collapsing. That fire started around 3 o'clock this morning. You can see some of the damage right there. Spokane Valley fire crews managed to evacuate all residents of the house safely. Crews were also able to get to safety before the roof collapsed. That fire was put out within the hour and the family's cat was found safe. The Spokane Valley Fire Department's reminding everyone to check their smoke alarms and have an escape plan in place. A man is dead following a hit and run crash in downtown. This all happened around 11 o'clock this morning near 3rd and Wall Street, which was closed for most of this afternoon. Krem 2's Christian Garza is joining us now live at the scene. And Christian, what do we know so far at this hour? Yeah, well, what we know so far is that they and by they, I mean the Spokane Police Department are looking for an SUV in relation to this situation. And it happened actually right here behind me in this intersection. Now, SPD says that that 911 call came in at around 11 this morning. When medics arrived on scene, SPD says they began life saving measures. However, the victim died because of his injuries. SPD says that the name of the victim will be released by the Spokane Medical Examiner. SPD asks that anyone with information to please contact Crime Check at 509-456-2233. Now, this is the fourth fatal hit and run that we've had here in Spokane County this summer. According to the Governor's Highway Safety Association, 7,000 pedestrians were killed by cars last year. That's a drop of 5%, but it's still higher than pre-pandemic years. Christian Garza, Crem 2. Christian, thank you so much. In the meantime, let's take a live look over SeaTac Airport, where they're still trying to rebound from last weekend's cyber attack. But here's how things look inside the airport. If you are departing out of SeaTac, you should be fine as long as you get there at least a couple of hours before your flight. Airport officials say TSA lines are moving and they haven't had major backups. Now, if you're arriving there, that is a much different story, especially if you've checked a bag. 
The boards are still down, so there is no flight information available, and people are also having trouble finding their luggage. The airport has to write down all the information down on a whiteboard, and it's causing a lot of frustration for some passengers who didn't plan on checking a bag in the first place. I said I really don't want to do that. We had a bad experience, and I just don't want to do that. Um, they said, no, don't worry, that, that won't happen again. That, I don't know what happened, but it won't happen again. So then I got a text um, while we were landing, said that our bags were delayed on a later flight. Now, whether you're flying in or out, make sure to have your flight information printed out or on your phone through your airline's app or another travel app. The airport systems are still down, so you can't use their website. Now, if you have plans on driving to Western Washington for the holiday weekend, you should expect to see some heavy traffic going over the Cascades on Interstate 90. According to WashDOT, you should expect to see moderate traffic between 10 o'clock in the morning to 7 at night for today and tomorrow. Now, if you're coming back on Labor Day, you should expect to see the most traffic on I-90 starting at 11 in the morning with things cooling off by 5. Meanwhile, after four days of counting, Spokane County has finished its hand recount for the tight race for Commissioner of Public Lands. This week, 35 election workers recounted more than 140,000 ballots. The race was separated by just 51 votes. Spokane County will be certifying the recount on Tuesday and will then send the report to the Secretary of State. Only four counties were left to finish the recount. The statewide results will be certified next week. With only 67 days until the election, the presidential nominees are honing in on their messages. Both sides hoping to gain support among women on some of the country's hot button issues. CBS's Natalie Brand brings us more from Washington, D.C. with details. Former President Donald Trump is in western Pennsylvania working to boost his base in the battleground state. Somebody said women don't like Donald Trump. Part of his mission is to shore up support from women on issues including IVF and abortion. With victory this fall, we will enact this pro-family agenda and we will bring back the American dream, bigger, better, and stronger than ever before. He's also facing backlash from some conservative groups about his comments Thursday, suggesting Florida's six-week abortion ban is too restrictive. They attack him on that he did away with abortion. No, he did not do away with abortion. He sent it back to the states where it, was, where it should be. Friday evening, Trump speaks to the conservative group Moms for Liberty, where parental rights are a top concern. The fact that parents have the fundamental right for complete upbringing of their children and that big tech, big government overreach is trying to take that away from parents every day. Vice President Kamala Harris is looking to lock in her sizable lead among female voters. And next week, her campaign launches a reproductive freedom bus tour, making more than 50 stops till Election Day. In her first major interview as a presidential candidate, Harris was asked about some of her policy shifts, including on fracking. No, and I made that clear on the debate stage in 2020, that I would not ban fracking. As vice president, I did not ban fracking. As president, I will not ban fracking. Harris campaigns in Pittsburgh on Labor Day with President Biden, where energy issues are top of mind. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington.